All praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, forever and ever. So let it be true. Love, honor, and respect to the Creator, Yahweh, to His Holy Son, Yahweh Shai, who died for the 12 tribes of Israel. Double honors to the apostles of GMS, to the four major prophets, the minor prophets, and the hopeful elect, the 144,000 brothers, the saints, the Akim, who are preaching the word of God to the four corners of this earth, risking their lives day in and day out. And shalom to the great multitude of brothers, sisters, and children who are watching these videos together as a family. We're on another lesson. Today's Tuesday. I believe it's the 18th of October. And today, uh, Zelensky says no peace deal with Vladimir Putin. USA and NATO want world war. Because they're the one. Uh, just remember, Ukraine is a puppet. That, uh, that president there, he's a puppet for the United States and NATO. They're, they're running the show. They're the ones that are uh, putting billions of dollars every month to Ukraine with, uh, with tanks, with helicopters, with uh, ammo, ammunition, uh, with those stingers, with short-range missiles. We're supplying all their military needs because we're at war with Russia because like I said the international bankers the Rothschild bankers they want the whole world in their hands and Russia got to go all right so uh, what else is going on US military is on a high alert nuclear bombers and submarine hunters are on the coast of uh, they're in the air over Washington DC the East Coast so they've been flying all day, going back and forth, going in circles, looking for Russian nuclear submarines. So that's how close we are of one of our cities of getting hit. So right now, uh, US and NATO and Russia, we're on DEFCON 2, which means red alert. Next step is DEFCON 1, which is a, it's a, it's a white symbol, means nuclear exchange between U.S. and Russia. We're on uh, DEFCON 2 right now. If it goes to 1, that means it's going to be exchanging. Like I said, if they put this out on the news on CBS or CNN or Fox News, everybody would be running out of their uh, houses, running to the stores. I mean, it would be total panic, panic with what would happen within seconds if they, if they broadcast that on the news, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and jump in uh, to the holy book of Ezekiel. And yesterday, we were talking about the chariots of God. With the US government, they call them the UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And I was telling you about in my, in my backyard, two chariots of God came to in my backyard within feet of our window in the back. Because the back room that we have, that's really the only room that we had windows. And uh, like I said, when that when a chariot comes, it picks up, it pulls. Like I said, it'll pick up, like rocks would come up in that movie, The Knowing. Now in, in our bedroom, everything lifted up. The dressers, the bed, we all, we, everything was pulled up. And then uh, right when the chariot left, like I said, when we seen the chariot, it was beautiful. The lights on that chariot was look, like looking at a, a big fire of the yellows, like the blue and the red. It was just bright, it was beautiful. And uh, when it left, you couldn't even see it leave, it just left. And then we, the bed went down and fell to the ground, okay? And then, like I said, I used to go to Chicago every year. My, my mother, she had a twin sister. so. Every summer we would go to Chicago on the Amtrak train to Chicago. And it leaves here every evening in Denver. The train leaves at 7 p.m. And, it, and it, heads, it heads to Chicago. By morning time, you're in Chicago. So this is uh, 70 through the whole 70s and 80s. I would go every year. So now this time it was during the day. The two times I was in my backyard here at the house of morning, it was at night. Okay, so there was like... Like it was on this bright, shiny chariot. 
So this was during the day we went to the grocery store and we uh, went to my, my auntie's house. And I was with my great grandmother. She was already in her 80s. So my mother and her twin sister, they, were, they took my mother, uh, my grandmother to the, to the home in the backyard. My auntie never opened the front door. She always, everybody had to come through the back when it came through the kitchen. So we were getting the groceries, me and my cousin were about the same age. And uh, we took, the, we were taking the groceries in the back and then we, we had more groceries in the car. So we went back and when I was pulling the, grabbing the groceries, I looked, when I was heading back towards the house, I just looked up and there was a, a chariot. And this chariot was probably the size of three homes, three houses above my auntie's house. And now this one, there was no lights. It was more of a metallic, like a silver, that's the only thing I could really explain how it looked. But it was a silver, shiny metallic. A, a metal that you've never seen with your eyes. And when I looked at it, it was just like, you know, I wanted to go home. It was like I just, I could feel, I didn't see nobody, there was no windows. It was just beautiful, it didn't make no noise. And, uh... It was just, it was just a beautiful, just a, a sight to see. And my cousin that was next to me, he just totally panicked, started screaming, and, and they couldn't even talk. He, he just turned like red and was crying. And I could just hear him, you know, making all these noises on the side of me. I was just amazed by the beauty of this chariot. And I wanted to go home. He, he runs to my auntie, my mom, and my grandmother, and he was screaming. He couldn't even talk, and it just left. Like I say, it, it, when it leaves, you, it, it's so fast that your eye can't even catch it. So I go, I walk back to the backyard, and my auntie's yelling at me. She thinks I, I did something to my cousin, which I didn't lay a hand and a finger on him. He couldn't even speak. He was, he was just going, oh, he couldn't talk. The, 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 the kid couldn't talk. And this, at this time, I was a teenager. So I had to be in the early 80s, 81, 82. And, uh, and he was just saying, he couldn't even talk like I said. And I said, there were, I just said, we've seen something above the house. They couldn't understand, you know, they're, the my aunties and all, they didn't understand what a chariot, they didn't know. He was just saying there was a thing. He, like I said, he, it, it took him hours. He couldn't even uh, compose himself. So, like I said, I've seen these chariots throughout my whole life, but to see that uh, chariot that close, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's beautiful to see a chariot that close. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna jump to the holy book of Ezekiel, and Ezekiel was a great prophet. He's one of the four major prophets. I'm gonna do a little introduction of the prophet Ezekiel. So you have uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Daniel. Those are the four major prophets. And Ezekiel, uh, this is during the time of 593 and 571 BC. This is when it was written. And uh, Ezekiel, the time he was reading it was during the time of Judah, Benjamin, and Levite. The other 10 tribes were already long gone on this side of the world. So the prophet Ezekiel lived in exile in Babylon during the period before and after the fall of the holy city of Jerusalem in 586 before Christ. His message was addressed both to the exiles in Babylonia and to the people of the holy city. The book of Ezekiel has six principal parts. The Most High's call to Ezekiel to be a prophet, warnings to the people about God's judgment on them and about the coming fall and destruction of the holy city. Three messages from the Lord God regarding his judgment upon various nations that oppressed and misled his holy people, his chosen people. For comfort of Israel after the fall of the holy city and the, pro and the promise of a brighter future. And what, that, what is that brighter future? That, that's with us with the Son of God. Five, the prophecy against Russia, Gog, Magog, Six, Ezekiel's picture of a restored holy temple and a nation. 
and that restoration, that's yeah, that's Yahweh Shai restoring the twelve tribes. Okay. Uh, e e Ezekiel was a man of deep faith. Many of his insights came from his visions, and many of his messages were expressed in vivid, symbolic actions. Ezekiel emphasized the need for inner renewal of the heart and spirit, and that renewal of heart is the mind of the holy book. Our people need a renewal the mind. So the heart means the mind. Our people have been doctrinated by Satan here in this rule, especially here in America with school. You drink the Satan's Kool-Aid. So most two-thirds of our people have been brainwashed by lies, deceit, Wall Street, fraud, uh, worshiping idols. So that's that's the mind that has gone corrupt. So Ezekiel, from back then and today, is you need to renewal the mind in the truth of God and in, in the Word of God. Okay, so his uh, responsibility of each individual for his own sins. He also proclaimed his hope. For the renewal of the life of of Israel, you know, the nation. As a priest, as well as a prophet, he had special interest in the temple and the need for holiness. And that nation is that elect. Only God's elect is going to make it. Two-thirds of our people are not going to make it. Now, we're going to see them. All Israel will be saved, and that's in the kingdom brothers and sisters that didn't make it and they die in that nuclear fire that's coming between Russia and the United States they're going to come back the two thirds of our people they're going to come back later Okay, we're going to see them again no matter if they were good, bad we're going to see them again that's in the holy book of Romans look that up all Israel will be saved we'll go into those scriptures but today I want to stick with Ezekiel and the chariots of God now Ezekiel the Most High sent the chariots to Ezekiel. So we're going to start with uh, chapter, one, chapter 1, verse 1. Ezekiel's first vision of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, God's throne. And on the fifth day of the fourth month of the thirteenth year, I, Ezekiel the priest, son of Buzi, was living with the, with the house of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the exiles, by the Kabar River in Babylonia. The sky opened, and I saw a vision of God, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. It was the fifth year since King, since King Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim had been taken into exile. There in Babylonia, beside the Kabar River, I heard the Lord speak to me and I felt his power. I looked up and I saw a windstorm coming from the north. Lightning was flashing from a huge cloud. Now when he looked up, there was a storm and he seen the chariots of God and they were moving like lightning. Like when you see lightning go from one side of the earth to the other, that's what he's seen. These are chariots. You're not going to hear this from Joel Steen. You're not going to hear this from the Pope. Lightning was flashing from a huge cloud, and the sky around it was glowing, where the lightning was flashing. Something shone like bronze at the center of the storm, and I saw what looked like four living creatures in human form. He seen four huge chariots, bronze, olive skin. But each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight. These were huge. And they had hoofs like those of a bull. And the bull, the bull, the ox, Oh, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep, let me continue. In addition to their their four faces and four wings, they each had four human hands, one under each wing. 
the two wings of each creature were spread out so that the creature formed a square with their wings tips touching and when they moved they moved as a group with without turning their bodies they all moved in a group and they were moving in the sky each living creature had four different faces a human face in front a lion's face at the right a bull's face at the left and an eagle's face at the back so all four corners had a face and that face the human face that's the face of Yahweh Shai with the beard with the scars on the face which he was uh, he was uh, suffered a great suffering for the 12 tribes so that face is Yahweh Shai this, you're talking about a chariot that has a face the beautiful face of the Son of God on these chariots and like that the time I seen that chariot it's something that your eyes will you, like I said when you when people when they come down people are gonna totally if you don't know this truth you're one of the, the uh, your brothers and sisters that know this truth is like it's a, it's a, the most beautiful thing that you could ever have it's like winning it's better than winning the lotto because the rest of these people they're gonna be jumping off bridges car accidents planes are gonna be falling out of the sky when this day comes because that day is coming when Yahweh shine the angels come and you're gonna see tens and tens of thousands of chariots coming so each living creature had four different faces a human face which was the face of Yahweh Shai a lion's face at the right which the lion stands for the house of Judah the most powerful tribe of Jacob a bull's face at the left and the bull represents uh, purity endurance honesty diligence luxury fruit of our lips sacrifice food it also means a special meal a tribute of the most highest power of Yahweh Shai. Well, that's what the uh, the bull represents um, and the eagle's face at the back and the eagle's face represents speed lightning speed like that lightning that you see when it rains those chairs move so quick that the United States Air Force they they they're terrified every nation under the Sun are terrified of the chariots of God that's why they turn it around with all those fake Christian stations on TV and they said those are demons no your government are the demons your politicians are the demons your president is a demon your judicial those so-called judges those fake phonies the Supreme Court we're the supreme judges of this earth the apostles the prophets and the servants of God not those wicked men that break the laws of God that's why the, you're gonna feel the wrath that's why the Most High sent up all these nations because he's about to destroy them, every single one of them. God, Yahweh Shai is going to destroy every nation under the sun. And Esau, that goes back to the Holy Book of Genesis, he gave him the sword because he's the most powerful military might on the, on the four corners. That's why our military is in every ocean, our submarines. The U.S. Navy, the U.S. Air Force, the Marines, and the Army. Esau has the greatest sword. But he set Russia, that's his instrument of death against America. That's why his nuclear missiles, his ICBMs, are called Satan 1 and Satan 2. Because they call America the great Satan, which is the great prostitute who sits on the beast. With that beast is that old Roman Empire. Two wings of each creature were raised, so they they touch the tips of the wings of the creatures next to it, and their other two wings were folded against their bodies. Each creature faced all four directions, so that the group could go with wherever they wished without having to turn. 
Among the creatures, there was something that looked like a blazing torch, constantly moving. The fire would blaze up and shoot out flashes of lightning. The creatures themselves darted back and forth with the speed of lightning. As I looked at the four creatures, I saw four wheels touching the ground, one beside each other. And one of them, all four wheels were alike. Each one shone like a precious stone and each had another wheel intersecting it at right angles so that the wheels could move in any of the four directions and the rims of the wheels were covered with eyes and the, uh, the wheels of those eyes are the lights uh, flashing lights came out of the chariot so he called them eyes when he seen them but those were the lights like I said, the, the, the lights of fire. And whenever the creature moves, the wheels moved with them. And the creature rose up from the earth. So did the wheels. And the creatures went wherever they wished. And the wheels did exactly what the creatures did. Because the creatures controlled them. And that's the chariots of God. He called it a creature. Because when he seen the face of the eagle and the bull. And... Uh, when he seen that, uh, uh, and the, uh, the face of a lion, he looked like great. Uh, uh, that chariot looked like a great creature. So every time the creatures moved or stopped or rose in the air, the wheels did exactly the same. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there because there's more I want to read. But like I said, read the holy book of Ezekiel. It's a beautiful book. And the chariots are real, and God's going to redeem his people soon. And they're being seen all over the world, mostly from a distance. So people are seeing the chariots of God. And like I said, the United States government, NATO, Europe, the U European Union, Russia, China, Japan, Korea, they all know. And they're terrified because they know they're going to go into captivity. Who put us in captivity must be put in captivity. So all praises to the Most High God forever and ever. So let it be true of all your brothers and sisters edified in this truth. All praises to the Most High forever and ever. And we're, we're, we'll bring out another lesson tomorrow about the chariots of God. And double honors to the apostles, to the four major prophets, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Daniel and the minor prophets, and the hopeful elect, the brothers, the 144,000, who are preaching the word of God, day in and day out. And to all the great multitude of brothers and sisters, keep the faith, have hope, and don't let this devil take your dignity. All praises to the Most High God forever and ever. So let me The water, Yehovah, Ba'ashem, Ya'en, Wa'ashem.